Ma'am, can we start the session, ma'am? Yes, Ashwini, we can start. Good afternoon, everyone. Respected principal, Dr. Y. Ashok. Vice Principal of Bhavans Vivekananda College, Ms. B. Nere Mathi, ma'am, Head Department of Computer Science of Saraswati Devi, ma'am, and Coordinator of Computer Science Department and Bhaskar Sir. Our speaker for the session and one of our, one of our noted alumni, Mr. Krishna Ivaturi, Director of Kennex of Private Limited. A warm welcome to each one of you for this webinar on design thinking, critical thinking and innovative design organized by Bhavan's Institution Innovation Council. In this world of research and day to day upgrading technology with innovative ideas, it is important for us as students to sharpen our brains and tie our belt towards contributing for developing innovative solutions. Critical thinking, which is one of the major aspects in providing innovative solutions, is a method of analyzing ideas, concepts, or data collected to evaluate the situation from different perspectives and arrive at an unbiased optimum solution. I'm sure by the end of this, this session, we will get a clear understanding about, about innovation design, critical thinking, and design thinking. As we begin with our webinar today, may I invite Mrs. B. Neremati, ma'am, Bhavan's Institution of Innovation Council and Vice Principal of Bhavan's Vivekananda College to give the welcome address. A very good afternoon. Um, Mr. Krishna Ivaturi, Director. Kinosoft Technologies Private Limited, uh, who is the guest speaker for today's event. Uh, Mr. Baskar, sir, uh, Faculty of Computer Science, who is coordinating this program. Mrs. Ashwini, coordinator for IIC of Bhavan's Vivekananda College, faculty members, and uh, dear students. Uh, I extend a very warm welcome to Mr. Krishna and uh, all the uh, audience for uh, today's program. Um, firstly, uh, I would like to thank Krishna for uh, accepting our invitation and addressing <coughs> our students. Um, today's world, uh, especially uh, our nation talk, keeps talking about uh, making uh, India uh, lot of uh, technology development and innovation and uh, things like that. Um, yeah, it looks like, you know, it's not just enough if you have just innovate uh, and have a, a product which does not have uh, much of uh, sustainability. So the product should be sustainable and also the innovation should be very, very uh, uh, with a critical thinking. Uh, so that uh, people uh, start using the product uh, in a uh, much uh, simpler way. Uh, ultimately, uh, the people's uh, work job should be done in a much easier way. So uh, the innovation also should keep changing um, in order to make the job of a person easy. I, 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 I'm uh, sure and I'm hoping that uh, today's session will uh, throw a lot of light on uh, the critical uh, thinking and design thinking and uh, the uh, innovation design. Um, I think uh, Mr. Krishna uh, will uh, uh, enlighten all of us uh, about um, you know this topic. So I appreciate uh, the initiative by the <laughs> Department of Computer Science, uh, Mr. Baskar 
and all the other faculty members and the institutions innovation council of bharati vidya bhavan's uh, vivekananda college for this initiative and i wish all the students all the very best once again i thank mr krishna for accepting our invitation and uh, being here to address our students to uh, enlighten them uh, thank you thank you ma'am now i request baskar sir to speak few lines good afternoon everyone present here uh, mrs neeramathi madam our vice principal madam and mr krishna uh, who was our alumni msc computer science and uh, he is uh, really working in the uh, innovative environment and he is one of the directors uh, it was uh, really great to have you here with us to enlighten our students krishna because you are in the technology where you are uh, uh, inventing and uh, designing the new methods uh, to sustain means to uh, minimize certain uh, resources maybe the expenditure or the performance several things so uh, you are the right person as well as uh, you are the since you are the uh, bhavan's alumni it is uh, very great to us to have you in front of our students uh, the audience will be enlightened with your talk as nirmati madam said it gives a lot of uh, innovation and also the new design techniques and the me mechanisms that helps the students to do a project and also to get the jobs in the uh, better in the future thank you all of you for giving me this opportunity krishna uh, now the uh, proceedings to the coordinator please thank you thank thank you baskar sir as we enter into the most crucial time of our webinar now i request my friend mansa to introduce our speaker i'm glad to introduce today's speaker mr krishna evaturi Mr Krishna Avaturi is currently serving as a director at Connectsoft Technology Private Limited a startup India and DPIIT certified private limited company focusing on industry 4.0 and next generation technologies such as IIoT data science and AI Connectsoft Technology Private Limited founded in 2017 is a current next generation technologies based on technology technologies based on it products it services and professional services company connectsoft technology is an ideated by a team of techno managerial professionals from the it industry and alumni or alumni of bvc and excel ri jamshedpur mr krishna has gained progressive techno managerial experience of over 19 plus years in it and ites industry that constitute serving in technical managerial and leadership roles mr krishna holds a master degree in computer science from bhavan's vivekananda college and masters in business administration from excel ri jamshedpur as a director of connectsoft krishna is involved in overseeing organizational activities ranging from strategic to operational and market research mr krishna is involved in evaluation of feasible ideas building it product IT project teams with relevant knowledge, skills, abilities, and attitude, empowering project teams, and overseeing the development and delivery. Mr. Krishna believes that startups should col collaborate and coexist to collectively move forward. And prior to Kenetsoft, Mr. Krishna worked in various technical and managerial roles in IT and ITES sector. involving people process and technologies and had opportunities to closely work with the leadership management as well as technical employee groups of small medium large enterprises and clients across apac middle east and us region and now i hand over the session to the mr krishna evaturi and i request all the participants to post your queries in the chat box where we can discuss a discussion at the end of the session Thank you very much for having me on this session. I take this opportunity to thank Bhavan's Institution Innovation Council (BIIC), Ashok sir, respected principal of 
BVC. Niramati Ma'am, Vice Principal BVC and President of VIIC. Saraswati Devi Ma'am, Department Head for Computer Science. And Sri Bhaskar Sir, Professor and Coordinator for Masters in Computer Science Unit. The VIIC team and the staff. And welcome to all the participants and future innovators attending this session. So now, as I see more participants have joined, um, please confirm if my screen is visible and if I am audible. Amita, ma'am. Yes, Krishna. You are, yes, sir. Your screen is visible and also you are audible. You can continue, please. Krishna, are you sharing your screen? Yes. PPT. Yes, yes. You can click is on the share. It visible, no, it is not yet come. Okay. Till now it was visible, so I was just thinking. Uh, sir, no, there the is an. Was disconnected, sir, in between. Krishna, sir. Is it visible now? You, you, now you have joined only with one uh, system. I think your mobile or the system is not connected. Previously, we were connecting with two devices. Okay, so just give me a minute. Till now, yes. it was fine. Yes, sir. In between, just now, yes, it uh, locked out. Just give me some time, ma'am. I think uh, at the right time, there are some bandwidth the logging issues. Yes, sir.
Please bear with me. So I think uh, there is an issue with Chrome browser and uh, Microsoft. So I'm working on uh, Edge to open this. And from there, I think we'll just make up. Yes, sir. Yeah, In fact, Amita, ma'am, and I were ready for last uh, half an hour, <laughs> but at the right time. Yes, sir. You have joined before a half an hour itself and you are ready with that uh, session. Yeah, these things do happen. How we manage to get over this is actually the experience. Just bear with me. Okay, no problems. Or is it that uh, the participant count or something could be an issue that it knocked me out, uh, one of my instances that we have to check. I'm trying to join again. Okay, sir. Krishna, sir, just a small, uh, sorry, I mean, uh, is it fine if you could share that presentation with us? So we will share the screen, sir. If... Oh, yes, that can also be done. Sir? The only issue I have uh, been facing uh, most of the time was with Microsoft. Teams. True, true. <laughs> Zoom and Google uh, Meet were always fine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you, could, yeah. you can just uh, share it with uh, Amita, ma'am, sir. Uh, sir. We will share the screen for you. We will share the presentation. That's a good idea. Please expect an email. Okay, sir. You have shared in the mail. I'll check. Sir. Yeah, please expect it. Okay.
sir did you send the mail sir yeah i think uh, it's getting uploaded possibly the size so please confirm your email address also now once sir m a r a m yeah m i t h a at the rate gmail Krishna, you have any technical issue? Yeah, so now it was fine. Now I lost that presentation as the board guardian. Sir, you did. Sir, I'm not muted. Sir, please please receive the email. Sir, I'm checking, sir. One second. No, sir. Still, I didn't get any mail. Okay. Can you share in the WhatsApp, sir? So it's a uh, file size. Can you share yeah. in the WhatsApp, sir? Yeah. Yeah, shared it. Yes, sir, got it, sir. Just will be sharing soon. Yeah, maximize. One second. Madam, you can press F5 to maximize. Yes, sir, yes, sir. It's loading, sir. Loading. <laughs> Yes, 
Yes, sir. Krishna, sir, are you able to see the screen, sir? Yes. Uh, I don't think it's an F5 mode. So. It is It is on F5, sir. I'll do it once again. I'm doing it again, sir. One second. My system is also lagging today for no reason. Because it has a few animations. That, that's all. Acha, acha, acha. No, no issues, sir. Just. Uh, so is it fine now? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. You may start, sir. So yeah, uh, apologies for the technical glitch, but I think the learning is how we try to overcome such issues. You know, the innovative idea was to have the presentation shared over WhatsApp to another member to share the screen is a simple example of how we could not panic and continue to think more from a solution dwelling perspective. And I thank those who have given the suggestion for sharing this presentation on uh, WhatsApp to have the session going. So welcome once again to all the future potential innovators. So the first thing we will try to do uh, as part of this session, because I understand the audience are more also from a technology background, pursuing their uh, graduation and post-graduation in uh, computers. And I believe there are a few MBA candidates possibly in the session. So we'll take an approach where we'll try to focus a bit on innovation related to information technology. But let me give a disclaimer or a myth that we should not get into is that design thinking is not only for IT. Yes, we will take a few examples related to information technology as we progress in the session. But the disclaimer is design thinking is applicable across for various sectors, businesses, personal life, various small to medium to large scenarios, right? And it's about how we experience and overcome certain things and continue to innovate for ease of use, right? So with that, uh, we will start our session, if we can move to the next slide. We are talking about market research here. Yes, so market research is predominantly a known term to most of the MBA students and also to many others in this uh, session. Particularly as we focus on technology and technology oriented business. Market research is the fundamental to understand whether we are innovating a new product, how is the market fit going to be, who will be your potential customers. If you are having a competitor already doing a similar thing, doing a competitor analysis, taking the customer feedback in case you had a previous version of your software or a product. and you wish to improve upon it, then customer feedback and ideas for new product development. And how does it meet the consumer's needs in a more effective manner compared to a previous product of yours or a competitor's product? How can you be more innovative and effective? Is all part and parcel of market research so in this, if you see specifically, ma'am, if we click uh, next button, you will see there is an animation that highlights three of the points here. 
which are closely associated to design thinking as we move forward. One is customer feedback, where again, we are talking about customer or consumer. Sometimes based on how we are doing our business, right? It is possible that we as an IT company are offering our product or service to a manufacturing company or a retail company for their uh, stores to go online. And those customers can have consumers. So it's a B to B to C. At the end of the day, when we are using the jargons like market, customer, consumer, all these are still at the end of the day, people utilizing our services directly through us or through our clients. Let us say I have designed an online retail application. I am selling that to, let us say, Ratnadeep as a chain of supermarkets. So how the customers are using the app to order online groceries is an experience. There are many such apps and how we are more simple, how we are more innovative, how we are trying to empathize from the end user or the consumer standpoint is the focus of design thinking. With this backdrop, let us move to the next slide. So most of you who have spent time understanding design thinking, which was coined by Tim Brown and few others, this picture is of Tim Brown. So design thinking, according to Tim Brown, is essentially a problem-solving approach. Problem-solving approach is also called a solution dwelling. A lot of times what happens, people start focusing on the problem and continue to dwell with the problem rather than coming out of the problem and thinking of a possible solution. So first we should not panic when a problem happens. Example, our presentation didn't start, but we had an alternative way of getting it started. So the solution dwelling approach is also called a problem solving approach. And it combines a holistic user centric perspective, but it is not based on your gut feeling or your experience. It is based on rationale. It is based on analytical research. Let us say based out of my experiences in life as an individual or as a member of an organization, I might have created my perspective, but most of you who have learned statistics and mathematics do understand that an individual cannot be a good sample of a population, right? What is a sample? Sample is a consistent, efficient, sufficient estimator of population. So my ideas should not be directly put unless we pick up potential end users ask them questions, understand their thoughts, understand their pain points, and then come back, analyze what possible solutions can be offered for a given problem that a sample of a population is facing. It is not your own experience. It has to be for a group of people or a large category of people so that the solution is more holistic and acceptable. That is where we call rational and analytical research. And the goal is to create innovative solutions to innovation design. So here, in this one slide itself, we have covered something called design thinking definition. We have discussed about sample. Sample is nothing but a consistent, efficient, sufficient estimator of a population. What they feel, middle class people, low class, high class, there are a lot of categories of people who may be end users of your product or a service. Sometimes it could be businesses. When we are offering IT service to Infosys, right? It is a DVD, but somebody is getting benefited at the end. So this is how we have to think. We have to utilize our critical thinking, but 
in the interest of the end user. That is how you form a design thinking approach. There's another definition as you see on the slide. It is a non-linear iterative process. Okay, so there is a five step process which is introduced to implement the concept of design thinking. And these five steps need not be linear and as a part of continual improvement, these can continue to iterate. Maybe the first version of the product or the POC or the MVP comes up with a certain degree of clarity. But you also have the opportunity to identify some more concerns. You address those concerns. So you follow an again an iterative model of a series of steps that we will discuss in the next slide, which is about iterative process for continual improvement so that your product getting innovated, keep solving major challenges followed by medium challenges followed by minor challenges and over a period of time continuously becomes a A grade product or a service over time. So that's about the second definition and ultimately it is all about customers need. So there are two ways market research in the previous slide that we spoke about is a business view towards how products or services have to be identified and design thinking is the end user bi-directional way of how we can a 360 degree get a view of a 360 degree understanding both from a business perspective and from an end user's perspective this required the potential innovator before directly trying to innovate something because he's not innovating for the sake of innovation he is innovating for the product or the service to be consumed by the people there has to be a business approach at the same time empathizing with the end users so that is the concept which we will discuss further if we can move to the next slide Yeah, so this slide is a pause before we actually go into design thinking because we have already given a disclaimer that says design thinking is not specific to IT industry alone. Design thinking is a holistic perspective of end user experience for whatever product or service one is trying to offer as a business entity. Because most of the audience are associated with courses on computer science and information technology and business and business administration, I have tried to put few jargons which we need to understand from an IT perspective before we generalize design thinking. So particularly on the IT, what happens is there are three to four levels in which user experience can be enhanced. When the industry was established and web-based applications were being designed, right? The initial thing that was in focus from a design perspective that interacts with the end user was user interface design. This example I'm taking from IT, but please don't consider design thinking is only for IT. It is a holistic thing. So continuing with the example, particularly in the IT sector, user interface design is a level one kind of an approach. So it is all about what kind of color combinations you are using in creating a web interface, right? How beautiful you are making things look, right? But second phase, as the industry continue to evolve further, and mature with their web applications and mobile applications and Android applications. What happened is user interface is level one interaction of your product or an IT product in this example with the potential end users. But the level two is another variant called user experience. 
So the difference between UID and UXD or UED is first thing only focuses on the touch and feel of the screen on the number of buttons you have, the form that you have to fill, whether the tab is going to each of the next fields in a chronological order. Now let's assume you're filling an online form and you're using keyboard like tab. After filling first name, if it jumps to the sixth field, would it be a good user interface? No, it has to be in a chronological order. So that kind of design, particularly if we take IT as an example, where end user is only interacting with your user interface, he is not interacting with the code behind. So this particular thing is a level one design process where the interaction happens with the screen or a button or a set of fields to be filled. But user experience, ma'am, we can click the, yeah. So to summarize user, this is an IT example. So user interface design is the process designers use to build interfaces in software or computerized devices, focusing on look or style. That is a very fundamental basic level. When the industry evolved, the focus was more on UI. The same thing, what is visible to us, right? But user experience is not only about what you see. There are a lot of times people know they have problems, but they will not be able to express it. It is up to the business owners to question, to analyze, to be able to understand the pain points, to capture them and then come up with a better version where UX comes as a level two. It's a matured version of thinking how your product is getting accessed by the users. So UX comes as level two, right? So what does UX talk about? It is a design process where the sole objective is to design a system that offers great experience to its users. Now the difference is, let us say I have a very beautifully designed button that I can click and submit, but the button is somewhere at the top right corner of the web page. It's a beautiful button, right? But would it give a good experience? May not necessarily. Some of them may adjust, but for some of them, it may not look good. If you hit a tab on your keyboard, and if it is taking you from first field to sixth field, and then second field, and then fourth field, would you be interested in such a form, even though it looks very beautiful? So it is also about usability and user experience. The industry has evolved over a period of time, particularly the IT, right? on the user experience as a level two. We could call it as a level two of design thinking in the progress, in the process of maturing the way we think. All right. So unlike UI, UX embraces the theories of number of disciplines, not only user interface design, but also usability, accessibility, information architecture, and more importantly, the last thing, human computer interaction. Now, most of you have used Google, right? I'm sure all of you in this session have used Google. Now, does Google look simple? I believe for most of us, Google search engine is a very simple user interface or a user experience to use. But one point we have to understand here is as a business owner or as a product innovator, our idea should be to make our product simple, efficient, rich in user interface, rich in user experience for the end user and keep it as simple as it can get for the end user. And in IT, there is a saying. Simple for the end user means a lot of complexity has to be absorbed by the engineer, the innovator. 
you will not believe the algorithms that google runs behind its simple search engine or other products are very complex not that always it has to be complex but yes the fundamental thing in information technology products is to give a great user experience a simple usable product to the customer there is a lot of complexity that the engineering teams have to absorb in the interest of the end user you absorbing complexity in the way the algorithms are built in the way you are efficiently doing your coding is all in the interest of the end user so as the it industry progresses there is a gradual shift from user interface to user experience and now a holistic perspective of end user and level 3 and level 4 way of thinking towards end users comfort or end users ease of use is bringing the entire industry towards design thinking and for us to have design thinking how critical thinking is correlated and combination of design thinking and critical thinking how we could come up with effective or efficient pocs minimal viable products mvps as we call in the product industry for it or also for others minimum viable product let it fail in the initial versions but you are failing fast failing fast is a good thing rather than assuming with your isolated thoughts that whatever you think is right for the market and build the entire product with about lakhs of crores of investments and then nobody is using it that's a that's a bigger failure both in terms of time both in terms of money and both in terms of users not able to effectively use it so move out of silos and apply design thinking which will follow a set of iterative steps but even then when you fail you are failing at an mvp level which is not so much of time invested not so much of cost involved because business always looks at time cost market etc as most of uh, mba students can connect to these words if there are Uh, in this in this audience so right so with that thought we will see how the next evolution of design thinking happened as i was already talking look at the interface or the user experience of google does it look simple similarly apple apple ipod or apple no uh, ma'am keep it here so yes so see how simple it is for you and me to use it because all the complexity the design thinking the analysis the algorithms that should be built how they should be broken down whether it should be a tightly coupled system or a loosely coupled system with application programming interfaces how does single sign on help right because with your single google email id or a username you could access multiple google applications which is comparable to a single sign on sso as we call it in the it sector when you are using a single username password to access multiple applications or product units so you can use it for gmail you can use it for uh, you know other google products but look at how simple it is to keep it simple for the end user to have a great experience for the end user the product company will have lot of complex things to work out encapsulate those complex systems from the end user just give him a seamless wonderful experience whether it is just a search engine or a mail or anything imagine if google had various users or usernames and passwords for each of its application so for google you will use one for gmail you will use one for uh, meetings you will use something else so single sign on for google is addressing security 
user authorization authentication at the same time you need not have 10 username and passwords to use in products of google one username one password is fine so all this is thinking thought process with customer or end user in mind so google is just an example there are there is apple another best example right most of those who start using apple right either the uh, macbooks or their uh, phones once they get used to it it is hard for most of them to get back to other devices that's the level of addiction that steve jobs and team have created based on principles like design thinking putting the customer you uses in in uh, perspective that's that's the reason why apple was successful for a long time so they did even before this design thinking as a formal jargon has come out they have done this one famous quote from steve jobs is by the time you assume and deliver things and realize it is not exactly what the customer needs and then you prepare something the customer needs the customer's need has already changed so you have to be focused on the future the use of the benefits for the customer at the same time expedite your thoughts in designing and developing product now so that it is useful before the end users needs change so you also have to be fast okay ma'am we can go to the next slide so uh, continuing the example from it sector right so level 1 is ui level 2 is user experience level 3 level 4 is all about design thinking critical thinking there is another jargon which is there in the industry that is coming up it is called complex problems and wicked problems so design thinking is a holistic approach to identify and solve those unseen problems which even the customer himself cannot explain unless a market research agent or a critical thinking specialist who is a part of a product team will go and ask a series of questions only then even the actual end user will realize ha huh, yes this is a problem oh yeah this question needs a solution so you have to elicit the needs because ui and ux are more of seen or experienced solutions to problems but there are still lot of unknown unseen wicked and complex problems as per the jargons that are being used for which unless we have a good critical thinking capabilities for our own selves and for the kind of product we wish to design and to be able to put our questions as a part of critical thinking empathizing with the user if you combine your critical thinking skills with empathizing with the end user that's when you can identify the unknown problems unseen problems the wicked or the complex problems there is a subtle difference between complex and wicked but for now i don't think that will be uh, needed for discussion so with this backdrop on level 1 and level 2 of how user is interacting with the product or the system we can move to the next slide so here are some examples of who are using design thinking right some of the world's leading brands have rapidly adopted design thinking approach example google apple and many more right and it's also being taught in the universities these days and one reason for design thinking in the industry is it's useful to 
break down the problems of any complex or wicked system. It could be any business. As I have been telling, it's not only IT. It's any business, be it IT, be it manufacturing, be it government, be it social organizations. It's a holistic approach towards breaking down the problems, eliciting the needs, identifying the unknown problems through probing, questioning, where critical thinking is a component, and then you collect all this information along with your market research. Then you come up with a product or a design or an improvement to an existing product that will be more successful, likely to be more successful than just trying to rub your idea as a product onto the users. Next slide. So we have been talking about empathize a lot, right? So this is the five steps typically recommended for implementation of the design thinking concept. The first of which is, as we have been speaking about empathize already, there is a slight confusion in, in the jargon of empathize and sympathize. No, we don't want to sympathize. Sympathize, just for sake of English, is almost similar to empathize. But let's say, just for example, one of your friends has a problem and got less marks. And he or she is crying or weeping about it. Just example, okay? I know you all are wonderful students. This is just an example. Then you approach your friend. And when she says, she or he says that she is weeping because she has got less marks. If you also start weeping along with her, it is kind of sympathizing with her, supporting her with her problem by weeping along with her. That is sympathize. But we are not talking about sympathize here. We are talking about empathize. Empathize is more a trying to be in their shoes to support them in finding a solution or an alternative. It's like, hey, don't worry. I understand how you feel about it. But there is Next opportunity for you to do well. Let's not think about what has happened, but let's think about how we can get better scores. What are the ways in which we can do that? But you understand the problem. You telling that you understand the problem, but you not weeping with her, but trying to find a better way of dealing with the problem is Empathize. Sympathize means you also start crying. No, that's not what we want in, in when we are designing. So here in this case, now that we understand the difference between empathize and sympathize, our focus is empathize. When you go to do market research or to apply the concept of empathy as a part of design thinking when you are trying to build a product, Right, you go to identified sample of population, go to various users, whether it is small companies or whether it is individual users, you go to them, you will use your skills of critical thinking, which can be used for self improvement as well as to elicit the unseen problems of the users. You ask questions. You say, okay, I see this is the problem you have. Okay, from when have you been facing this? How do you think if this is a potential solution, would it work for you? Should it have anything else that can make your life easier? So these are some of the questions that you keep asking. These questions 
asking questions, relevant questions comes from practicing critical thinking. I'm trying to associate critical thinking to design thinking rather than trying to deal with each of the topic in isolation. This is my attempt. I hope uh, I'm making my point clear. So once you get some information, the end users will already be able to tell you. But the application of questioning through critical thinking is to ensure that even the person who has the problems, some of them he will not know unless you question and make him discover, yeah, this is also right. I have this problem. Yeah, I didn't realize. Yes. Unknown problems, unseen problems. They know it's a problem, but they are not realized to express it or they did not know. So getting those points will, will be the success factor of how you apply your critical thinking for design. Once that is done, now because you are, you are a business, you are an entity, you are a product innovator or, or a product improvement specialist, now you have to collate all that information. Then you move to your second phase of the iteration called defining. You define the problem after you have empathized, questioned, collected enough information, not from one or two people, but a decent sample. Right? If you're taking a product which is applicable to Pan India, right? It is not that you only ask Telangana people. Depending on what the product is, you should take a thousand members from Telangana. You should take a survey or empathize or questionnaire from other parts of the country so as to understand what are the common things or what are the specific things. That's when you have a sample of entire India. Let's say if entire India is 100%, right? If you take only questionnaires, surveys, data from Telangana, that sample is not a valid sample. It is a biased sample, which will only hamper your product when you release it to entire India because you have only analyzed Telangana, right? Just as an example. So you have to take five members from Telangana, five members from Gujarat, five members from other place. That's how you create your very, very valid sample. This is a statistical technique. Again, if you go into statistics, there is a sample random variable should be consistent, efficient, sufficient, estimated. These points will come up. We are not getting into statistics right now. So after you have done with empathize and you have got your information, you now define the problem in the way you want to Analyze from a business perspective because you already have the end user information with you. Then what we do is we ideate. Now, what are the possible solutions? Now, we have got the information in the empathize stage. We have defined the problem. Now, we are ideating the solutions. Ideating is only about thinking. It is still not about doing. It is only thinking. Okay, possible ways of solving the problem. One is an idea. Two, idea. Three, another idea. Four, okay. Out of this, is combination of one and three going to be a good prototype? Or combination of two and four going to be a good prototype? Or is three alone enough to solve the problem? Then you implement your design thinking from how to develop an optimized solution. Right? If some things can be done in a simple manner, you do in a simple manner. If some things have to be done with a lot of complications, given the kind of problem, then you encapsulate the complexity from the end user and you incorporate that into your design architecture. Right? And you come up with a Prototype. Prototype can also be called in some context, depending on how far we are proceeding with it. Is in some cases you could call it a POC. In some cases you could call it a minimum viable product. That is the jargon being used in the industry these days. Whenever a product company is coming up with a new 
products they don't directly do the full implementation they take the agile methodology agile approach and start doing smaller things so that when they fail they fail fast they fail with less cost less time and still the mvp is good enough to analyze the failure and to improve upon your next prototype and between various versions of your prototyping you always have a test where you test identify issues come back improve go forward so it is a non linear iterative method as we have seen in earlier slides based on the definitions of design thinking so this is more about design thinking i think the next slide yeah it's also similar representation of design thinking to critical thinking to innovation design so it says uh, design thinking is always user centric okay and innovation thinking is customer centric in some cases it is likely that customer is a user but more often in b2b scenarios customer is different and end user is different i'll give you an example i am an it service provider and recently because of covid or whatever reasons a company or an organization has come to us saying guys we have a brick and mortar retail stores but with covid not many people are visiting us so we have to make them know and buy our products without them visiting us or we visiting them then they came up with an idea of leveraging information technology or a mobile application or a woocommerce based you uh, know e-commerce application in that case we become the service providers and our customer becomes the guy who is willing to build or pay us for building a mobile application that is like e-commerce and he is only a part user of that he is only going to use the admin module and see how many orders have come and things like that but there is another end user module that talks about how the end user will have the experience of ordering goods how simple the navigation is right so in my case the retail stores owner is the customer but major users are their consumers so for me it is a b2b and for the retail companies customers they are also called as end users so that's how we have design thinking more focused on the end users or larger population among the user groups so we can move to the next slide now you can click on uh, play it's a video it's a video i want you to listen carefully this summarizes design thinking one minute sir yeah so for some reason i don't know i think i don't have the plugins it is not playing seconds yeah if you see the icon ma'am the play button it should be there yes sir it says uh, not available sir quick time not available i get that uh, one second yeah yahan pe i get quick time not available probably that uh, plugin is not available on my system oh, okay okay no that, that's not that's okay because that's only to summarize the entire discussion of design thinking that we had okay i thought this video would, uh, would help sorry but sir. It, it's nothing different it's just what we discussed 
So we can move to the next slide. One second. Yeah. Yeah. Here I'm trying to bring our own example. As uh, some of you are aware, Kinexoft Technologies Private Limited is focusing on Industry 4.0 technology stack to help its customers. The reason we have opted for Industry 4.0 based technology products and services is it is a level playing field, whether it is gents like Infosys or Cognizant or Accenture or Kinexoft which is a Startup India certified company. Industrial IoT, Industry 4.0, Data Science, Artificial Intelligence, these are new technologies compared to the traditional technologies. So it's a level playing field, whether you are an innovative startup or already existing company. The reason I put this slide here as you see on the left side, we have built a proprietary gateway, IoT gateway on this PCB. When we were given a problem statement by the Telangana Irrigation Department, they have asked us to visit a particular canal on which there were about eight sluice gates those who don't understand sluice gates, sluice gates are those which you open and close for allowing the water to pass through during summers for farmlands, etc. It's one of the common thing that irrigation departments across the states do. When we assess the situation, we could have gone with Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, which I'm sure the IoT students and electronic students can connect to these jargons. These are ready-made devices, IoT gateways, Arduino, Raspberry Pi. There are two variants of IoT gateway devices. But when we use that for eight gates, what would happen to Telangana Irrigation Department's unit is for each gate, they have to procure a device, right? If there are eight gates, eight devices, 10 gates, 10 devices, and assuming with programming and integration and setting alerts and communication systems in place, for each device, even if it takes 10,000, then the overall cost for the Telangana Irrigation Department is 80,000 to a lakh. Right. So what we have done, and also for us, it was a maintenance. Right. So each gateway we have to maintain as a part of AMC that happened. So what we thought is because the team that we had previously worked for a German company sitting from Hyderabad office, but they were working for a German company, and we we got the team onboarded. I had this idea of, can we do something here? One device is enough for all the eight gates monitored. If somebody in the midnight tries to tamper the sluice gates, automatic SMS alerts will go to the local officials and Falcon programming is used to give the sensors based live data updates to the engineering in chief, guested officials, they would over a time know which village, what season, what theft is happening. So they are not having this information unless these kind of solutions come up. They knew theft is happening, but they had no data, no evidence of how to move forward. Now, shall we go for a lack of rupee for each site, depending on the number of gates that each site has? Or because we have competency in building our own IoT gateways, we said, guys, let's do it. So you see this green color left 
edges, right? Uh, on the left side, you see a light green color eight boxes on the IoT gateway device. The entire device was developed by our engineers. The, the point here I'm trying to make is a single device will not address all the eight gates. Okay. And if gate number three is tampered, right, the SMS will go 0010000 in bits, which means the third gate will have a one against it. So the reason why we did this is in some remote areas. Because canals are not always inside the city, they are almost always outside where there are no signals of GPS, GPRS, Wi Fi, etc. Right? So the system is having the intelligence to identify if an internet connectivity is available or not. Otherwise, it will use SMS information and store some information in its local cache. And whenever it finds a signal, it will update the engineering key, but also sends an SMS so that the intelligence is what is important here on how the device switches between SMS and Wi-Fi. More importantly, it's a single device. The cost is reduced, right? Instead of spending a lakh rupees, Telangana Irrigation Department could spend not more than 30 or 40,000. The maintenance has become easy. We have put this to a solar panel, about two feet by two feet or a one feet by one feet solar panel. And the energy from the solar panel comes and gets stored in a battery, the huge excite kind of a battery. And from there, it gets to the device such that the pollution is not there. And IoT devices are so energy efficient that even if there is continuous rainfall for one week or 10 days, the system will still run. So this now I think we can relate to a bit of design thinking, a bit of critical thinking, the way we asked questions to the guested officials. And the output is, our product got approved. The right side image is of the guested officials who are displaying the, acknowledging the approval of the, because we have shown them how the SMS have come to them. We have tried to tamper a gate in front of them, gate number three or a four, and immediately the local officials received the SMS, right? So they said they approved this, design, which is what you see on the right side. So the idea to share this is to talk about design thinking, talk about how you question the potential user of what they are looking at, what are the current problems. And then we didn't build the solution for all the canals, all the gates and all the canals. We did for one site, which is nothing but a minimum viable product. So I think this summarizes. We can move to the next slide. Now we can move to the next slide. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. So we have almost always been talking about critical thinking in parallel. It's about mind. If you are not in control of it, it will take control of you. So it's about how many thoughts are getting generated. How are you prioritizing those thoughts? How are you filtering those thoughts? How are you making sure that questions that come up as a part of your critical thinking process as you continue to practice are relevant given the situation, given the need, and how are we using it in the context of business? How are we using it for product innovation? Right. 
So this is a continuous activity which we have to do. There are a lot of thoughts that keep coming in. Given a scenario, based on the scenario, what are immediate things to be done? What are midterm things to be done? What is a long-term goal? And how do we address each of these? What kind of questions do we ask? What kind of responses do we capture? How do we dwell on the responses to come to a you know, enhanced thinking or delivering a product idea? So critical thinking is all about prioritizing, filtering, making sure that you are sensible in asking the right questions for the right scenario to the right people and trying to understand. If you combine your critical thinking and empathy, if you, if you combine your critical thinking and empathy, I think that's when you contribute more towards uh, design thinking and customer uh, satisfaction and the products that we build around things, rather than our own assumptions, our own ideas in silos, thinking that, you know, this is the greatest idea. Yes, you might have a greatest idea according to you, but that's not what the market wants. So what we have to do as a product company or a service company is to understand the market and then come back and plan our product or a service. You might be having a very fascinating idea, but unless there is a market acceptance, it will only be a fantasy rather than a real-time product. Sometimes when there are a lot of budgets, a lot of time, like Elon Musk, the rockets that come back and land, that's a great innovation. But I'm sure in some of his YouTube videos or interviews, you will realize to achieve such a critical thing, how many times he would have failed and what it would have costed him. Even if it was an MVP, it would have been very costly. So there are people who can afford that, who can take that risk. But it is always about data, information, end user, unknown problems, complex problems, wicked problems that you elicit through questioning. Questioning comes from the way you think, critical thinking, get the information and then understand the market. That is for majority of them. Not everybody is an Elon Musk. Even he does this, even he does, because for him, even an MVP is a very, very costly affair. So he will also want to fail early at a low cost and learn from it. The important thing is learning. Failing is not a failure. Not learning from the failure is actually the failure. So that is combination of critical thinking, empathy, and then you come up, right? Your probability of the product being successful will increase drastically. So that's all about uh, critical thinking. And uh, I think innovation design also, we have spoken while we were talking about the IoT device that we have developed as an MVP. However, there are slides which will cover the innovation design. But before that, yeah, so critical thinking is represented in this slide. It says inquiry. Inquiry is nothing but again questioning identifying, exploring, and organizing information and ideas. That is one phase. Then generating ideas or eliminating unpractical or impractical ideas, ensuring that the feasible ideas, whether it could be budget, whether it could be market, whether it could be time, what is feasible idea? versus 10 other ideas that you might get in the phase one of the circle. How you eliminate some ideas based on the situation, based on the market, right? Steve Jobs, again, uh, I'll quote him, he was saying like, I have a great idea, but it will take 10 years for me to implement it. By the time the user's needs would have changed 20 times. 
right so how much time it will take what is feasible is it affordable even if it is affordable for you as a company sooner or later we will put the cost we incur onto the product we are selling that's what is business but is it affordable to the user so there are a lot of things based on which you may get 100 ideas but you may want to only choose 10 or 15 which are practical implementable affordable in time before the market moves to the next stage you should be able to sell your product so accordingly your ideas have to be sorted and then do an analysis and come up with various procedures on how you could really implement it and then continue to improve your critical thinking process and apply it for questioning your customers getting the information and use that information for product development this approach is expected to help you build an innovative product or come up with innovative design which is actually the last slide but before that how do we question there is a cheat sheet which i have picked up from the web so critical thinking is all about who what where when why how and any other questions that you can think of so who will benefit from this right what are the strengths or weaknesses where would we see this in the real world when is this acceptable or unacceptable is this the right time why is this a problem or a challenge are there any similar how is this similar to something else so there are a lot of this is not by me this is already there uh, i just want to give, give a quick help in understanding concept of critical thinking in prioritizing your questions in the way you think and always in this context it is about critical thinking towards how your product can serve the end user for your personal life also you can use it another concept uh, most of the mba or hr students will know is uh, swot analysis strength weakness opportunities and threats that can also be applied to individual lives or to companies who wish to convert weakness into strength and threats into opportunities so similarly critical thinking is also not specific to it at all it is specific to one's way of fine tuning their thoughts enhancing their minds in this context in the interest of an innovative product or a service so with this we are done with critical thinking and then it is innovation it's it's now it, it's pretty straight forward innovation is a practical implementation idea is not an innovation idea is just ideation how do you effectively practically implement the idea be it a poc or an mvp is coming under innovation just having an idea and uh, just thinking over it or sleeping over it is not innovation it may be an innovative idea but unless you put it into action as a poc or an mvp or take it forward it, it is not innovation so innovation is practical implementation of ideas that result in the introduction of new goods or services or improvement in offering goods or services from an it perspective with all your permission if time allows i'll take one more example when i was doing my masters in bhavans all we were having is physical servers with artificial intelligence only being a theory and a concept and if somebody has to really build an ai based system way back in 2001 2002 the infrastructure was highly costly therefore ai neural networks fuzzy logic machine learning deep learning convolution neural networks natural language processing all these were only a theory we never had practicals on those 
our practicals were more as baskar sir can acknowledge is more on data structures search sort algorithms linked lists which were fundamentals which which still hold us strong because irrespective of where technology goes data structures is the key no doubt about it however what is innovation in this context is between then and now there are a lot of innovations that happened in coming up with the concept of cloud today we have cloud not back in 2001 so today you have amazon you have google cloud platform right today you have microsoft azure what is cloud cloud is nothing but leasing the infrastructure on an iaas model that is an innovation now lot of companies are able to afford building systems like neural networks artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning because now we have the necessary infrastructure not back then so what has evolved what has evolved in the industry to come up with the concept and implementation of cloud and offering services as infrastructure as a service platform as a service software as a service is nothing but an innovation in the context right so that is the reason today ai is more commercially accepted and viable we ourselves have built a framework on convolution neural networks that identifies the face of the person and if this framework is set up in a retail mall like a forum mall if you are looking at the led there is a small ip enabled camera on the led the led will also see who is looking at it and if you are a female it will play a lipstick ad if you are a male it can play a shaving cream ad so this is what our framework does the same framework can be used for gated communities if you are already a registered owner with the photograph in the system and if you are coming towards the gated community the gate automatically opens by looking at your car number and your and your facial features the same same system the framework is same the customization depends on whether it's uh, for advertising in the forum mall or if it is opening a gate in the gated community so the reason we were able to do that is because we had cloud so infrastructure being offered as a service is an innovation in this context so there's another definition the courtesy from manage pt as you already might have read innovation means developing original concepts and is a driver of reimagining business in business there's lot of competition these days so every small unique opportunity that you can collect from a group of users potential users having a problem is an opportunity for us data collecting information taking decisions based on information keeping the end user in mind developing your products that addresses their problems simple effective ease of use all this is what is differentiating one company from the other right and here also they say the last line innovation is often misunderstood as mere ideation we talked about this you having a great idea is just an idea if it is practically implemented through pocs and mvps fail is fail fine the purpose of mvp is to fail fast learn from the failure and improve your mvp get approved and then build the bigger system so that you have not wasted time money in failing at a larger scale you fail at a smaller scale learning is the key there as far as mvps are concerned it failing is not a surprise at mvp stage but how you have improved it and how you have come up with an innovative design or innovative product is the key so the last slide you can move on to yeah so innovation if we are trying to associate it with a set of stakeholders so let's say humans 
humans are users are one stakeholder the orange color portion the yellow color portion is business or companies and the pink color is visibility of technology right now if you look at center in white color you find innovation and you might be recollecting the sets intersections and unions of sets by looking at this image but if i look at the circle that is through this orange phase like desirable usable valuable the way we have to interpret this is if the innovation is valuable and usable if the innovation of a product or a service is adding value and is usable then it is desirable so the blue color and the green color is equal to orange color the desire to use will increase example apple right valuable usable is more from a human angle for a business it is possible and valuable the dark blue color the white color the green color and the yellow color for business right business always looks at what is viable viable means feasible practically implementable from a business perspective given at what stage of business you are right and whether it is possible and if it will be usable is about what technologies can be used which is a feasible so there are multi dimensional approach of how innovation is categorized for human innovation from the business perspective innovation from adopting technology so this fundamental should be keep in mind right from design thinking empathize and then critical thinking and then you come up with your mvps fairly fast learn quickly improve fast get into the market on time that's what will make companies and businesses and your products and your innovation successful that's all uh, about this so uh, i think uh, if you have any questions you can take them or we could also share them as an email either is Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, I request the participants to uh, post your queries in the chat box. Uh, it was a very informative session, uh, and I'm sure each of us have some uh, important takeaways from this uh, design thinking, critical thinking, and innovative design. And we have seen the evolution of design thinking in various sectors that could be helped to us in the future. And we have also seen about the critical thinking, uh, which helps us making decisions that require a lot of thought for innovative thinking, which is not specific to IT sector. And the last one, which is innovation, which is uh, an implementation of idea that results in new product or services. Uh, if you uh, participants, if you have any queries, you can post your queries in the chat box. Uh, And if there are any questions, please leave out. Hello, sir. Sir, remind me. Sir, remind me. Remind me. Students, whoever want to ask the question, just raise the hand. Madam will enable you to unmute your mic. Just to raise your hand. So you can, can interact with the sir. So.
I request the participants to fill the feedback form, which is in the chat box. Thank you, sir. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you all for your valuable time and uh, giving me the opportunity on behalf of uh, our company to share some of our experiences and knowledge. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, as we conclude the session, may I invite Mrs. Amita, Assistant Professor of Computer Science, to, pro to propose a word of thanks. <clears throat> Yes, I'm here. Respected Principal, Professor Vyash, Mrs. B. Naramati, President, Bhavan's Institution Innovation Council, and Vice Principal BBC. At Department of Computer Science, Mrs. KVP Saraswati Devi, Mr. N. Master, Assistant Professor, and Coordinator, MSc Computer Science. Dear faculty, colleagues, and my dear students, a very good evening to each one of you. I, Amita, Assistant Professor, uh, Department of Computer Science, deem it a privilege to propose the word of thanks for today's webinar. Firstly, I would like to thank our speaker, Mr. Krishna Ivaturi, Director, Kenexoft Technologies, Private Limited, for accepting our invitation to render this lecture to our students on design thinking, critical thinking and innovation design. Thank you so much, sir, for taking time out for your busy schedule to be present with us today. I also express my thanks to Mrs. Neremati and entire team of Bhavan's Institution Innovation Council for giving us this opportunity to organize such a webinar and also for their constant support in the smooth conduct of the webinar. I would also like to thank Mrs. KVB Saraswati, Mr. Baskar for their valuable suggestions and guide, guidance because of which this webinar would be a success. I would like to express my thanks to principal BVC and the management for their constant support and motivation for conducting this webinar. Lastly, my sincere thanks and appreciation to all my dear faculty and students who joined the webinar and made it grand success. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, before we end the session, I want to take a group photo so everybody can uh, enable their camera so that we'll have a group photograph. Yes, please, everybody. Ashwini, ma'am. Yes, thank you so much, sir. It was a great session. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Krishna, for uh, joining very... with us and sharing your experience with our students. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bye. Krishna, sir, for joining thank us. You. It was really an informative session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.